Today we're going to the Agent 2021 conference with Gary V, and I am pumped. It's gonna be great. It's probably gonna be the greatest day of my life this week. Hard Rock Stadium, Agent 2021, here we go. What's up, man? In the business. Oh, Love nice. You. How are you? Great personality. All right, Mind cool. I take a selfie? Yeah. Thanks, man. Sweet. Uh, you have to meet five new people every day. Okay. Right? Like, that's hands down. And if you're brand new, you should work for somebody else. Fantastic. And just learn from them. That's it. Great That's job. all you have to do at the beginning. Awesome. Yeah. And don't take a day off. What's up, Ryan? We see you in our bedroom all the time. Oh, really? <laughs> I see you in my bedroom all the time. <laughs> Why should the CEOs of major corporations, brokerages, be making money on our commissions? They don't, unless they're giving you the leads, mm. right? That's the biggest issue I've ever had with brokerages. It's like, why, why am I paying you 25, 30, 50% if I gotta go and meet these people on my own, do all the work on my own, and then you just take a cut for sitting in that office, it just doesn't matter anymore. Exactly. Right? It just doesn't matter. Even new agents, like it doesn't matter that you're like, hey, I work for this company, give me your listing. No one cares. And they keep thinking they're doing you a favor. And they're not. No. They'll, they'll try to do that until it's too late. Hey man, what's up, dude? How are you? I think we're talking a little bit, right? Yeah, we're Okay, cool. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Thanks. I wish we had some sun for you. Yeah, hey, your, put your shoes in, bud. Our shoes are basically the same. Not even close. You like my shoes on Instagram. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. I feel like I recognize them. Oh, you do. You? Would you? So I meet Gary for the first time. Well, I met him before, but we actually had breakfast on Monday morning. And we sit there uh, and we sit down. And one of the first things he says to me is, you know what? I don't want to talk about the Patriots because the Patriots have just won the AFC championship, right? And he said, there's nothing I, I hate more than a 33-year-old Patriots fan. <laughs> so I'm 33. <laughs> and I grew up outside Boston. And I'm a proud Patriots fan. And it's OK. My rent, where I was, uh, was $1, $1,167 at the time. So that was towards rent. And then. I just wanted to make sure that I did as many deals as possible. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute, there's only so much time in the day. Why am I spending so much time going to actors equity auditions and sitting here and being told no to my face and no about my gray hair and no about this and no about that that's so personal when I could meet people on the street, I could show them apartments that aren't mine. <laughs> I, I don't have to do anything else other than make personal connections. And then if they like a space, I get paid for it. Like I don't, I didn't create anything, especially when I was a brand new agent. I was like, this is a job and anybody can do it. You can get off a boat in New York City with under $500 and that is it. You can, you can make millions and millions of dollars and all you have to do is meet human beings. And that, that was my aha moment. I don't think it's just charisma. I think anybody can sell. Anybody can be taught to sell. Obviously there are people with natural born talent who have charisma, who have great personalities and they're people people. But then there are other people that don't like that. Like I, that's why I started this conversation by saying that I was the anti-salesman. Dude, I was overweight, chubby, face riddled with acne when I was in high school. I didn't want to talk to anybody. My Saturday nights were snick, right? There's guys in here that I went to high school with. I, I didn't have that many friends. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I was shy, totally ruined my self-confidence. The last thing I ever wanted to do was go into Starbucks in Manhattan and try to talk to people about renting apartments. Are you kidding me? I don't know what I'm talking about. But my back was up against the wall because I had no money. So I had to figure out, okay, if I'm gonna stay here, I've got my real estate license, I might as well figure out how to do this. I'm gonna leave my, my self-consciousness and my ego at the door, whatever that might be, and I'm just gonna start hawking real estate. I'm gonna talk about it like I know what I'm talking about, I'm just gonna figure it out. And then I worked every single day. And that's what the new show on Bravo is about. It's called Sell It Like Sirhan, and it's working with people who are the worst salespeople in the history of the world and you will see, it is ridiculous, and helping them through what their hurdles are. 
figuring out what their wall is, figuring out what their what is, what their who is, what their win is, right? If your win is just to make a lot of money, it's going to be hard for you. Because how do you work towards that every day? I'm going to make a lot of money today. Okay, great. Go, okay, go do it. But if you figure out what your win is and what your wall is, like what, what's the worst thing that could happen to you if you don't sell something today? That's your motivation for tomorrow. And I think that anybody who doesn't have a great personality or great charisma right now can become a great salesperson if they work at it. Because progress is happiness and if you're doing a little bit more tomorrow than you were doing today, that's gonna set you up for future you. And if you don't think that way, then I don't know, that's my stress. My stress isn't financial stress. Even if I buy something, even if I do something, I know I'm gonna work my ass off, everything's gonna be okay, I don't let that affect me. What I let affect me is that I'm not planning and that I'm not using enough of my potential. Because one day I will be dead, right? And I know you talk about this a lot as well. You know, that one day we will be dead and did you milk your potential as much as you possibly could? Maybe I'll come back for you. Cool. Yeah, you did too, man. That was really good. Nice curveball, yeah. there. I was like, you oh like shit, that? what's my question? <laughs> <laughs> the hell am I gonna answer? No one's ever asked me that before. Um, a, a quality like being sheepish, people wouldn't necessarily think about uh, as a sort of great for sales. How right. can someone turn that on on its head? How can they make the most of that quality? I th it's a great question. Um, and I worked with a lot of people while filming Sell Like Sirhan who who would look at me and say, I don't like sales. And I'd say, why? And like, because I hate salespeople. I'm like, oh, great. Why do, why do you hate them? Because a lot of people think that salespeople, great salespeople, are those bullish salespeople, those car salesmen, the buy, 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 buy. And it's, there are salespeople like that. They, they get the image because they're so loud about it. But the best salespeople, the best real estate brokers in New York are the ones you don't know. You should, you should find the best agent that you can, and you should work for them for free. Right. I believe that so much. Yeah, that's, I tell everyone that, and then no one does it. So like, I, I, that like I, that's why I kind of feel like, I'll say it, I just don't know if you're gonna do it, but it's, and I understand that it's hard to work for free because you have bills in, in life, but um, even if it's just for 1% of one deal that they do, right, just something small and insignificant, so that they can understand that you are so committed to them, and then you'll do an open house for them, right? And someone's gonna come in, and they're gonna like it, and you're gonna convince them to make an offer because you both have, something in common, whatever it is that your agent that you work for doesn't have, and then you're gonna be able to go back to him and say, listen, I think this person is gonna make an offer. Would it be okay with you if like, I took 5% on this deal? And they're gonna say, holy, sh I thought you were gonna ask for like 50. Yeah, 5%, sure, benchmark set. Going forward, everything you work on is 5%, which is this much, it's not this much. And you're gonna get to a point where you're 50-50, and then you're gonna to start to say, I know I'm gonna start my own thing, and that agent's gonna be like, please don't. No, 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 say, what do you want? I'll do whatever you want, please don't leave. Because you're gonna be so ingrained in their life and how they work, but now you've taken the best, and you've left the rest, and you'll do your own thing. You put it on a national scale, bravo, all of a sudden, I was like, you know, people, some people thought it was funny, but a lot of people were like, I don't like him, right? That guy's cocky, he's an yeah. asshole, he's young, like screw him. And it was like, what, are we, dude, I'm like, I'm like the shyest kid ever. Yeah. Like I did this show and it's like terrifying the entire time, but they don't show any of that. So I was like, you know what, fine, fuck it. I'll just own it and yeah. like amp it up and do more of that in season two, which is what I did. Uh, season two just went like overboard and then there were these articles like the broker we love to hate and like all this stuff that was just so not me. Yeah. So I just started doing things that were like natural, like fun, funny to me, goofy stuff with like Amelia, right? Like causes we like, charities, helping people. And it like slowly started to change. Cause what's funny is like the show comes out, there's like 12 episodes a year, that's it. Yeah. There's 365 episodes of this. Right. You know, let's try it this way because you know you did this thing on Instagram last month. Let's maybe we should bring some of that in, yeah. and that's kind of how it slowly started to change for me anyway. Yeah. He's like, I know you oh. do some. See ya.
You oh, need my, oh, you need my microphone now. Conference is over, and now we actually have a night off in Miami, and I can't tell you the last time the two of us had a night off. Like, no work is hanging out, and we're in Miami, and which means Ryan's time to get naked. A what? Towel oh, shirt. And I'm wearing a shirt that made out of towel. To should we gamble? Should we? We should gamble. Ah! Now, what do I do? Remember, it's like. Uh, no, this one. Can I show you something? It's like Creed. It's Creed's guitar. Creed. Oh, yes. Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> oh, there she is. All right, we're now in the Uber. We're on our way to dinner. We're with, hi, what's your name? Elena. This is a Toyota Yaris? Yes. What is that? <laughs> Hatchback. <laughs> Sorry. It's really popular. Is it really? <laughs> I've never been in a Toyota Yaris. Yeah. Can I show you the room in a Toyota Yaris? <laughs> I'm going to show you my legs. Yes. Those are my legs. Those are my legs. In the Yaris, this is great. You fit perfectly. These are my legs. This is the leg. This is the, this. The feet are down there. <laughs> wow. Let's do it. Let's take a photo. Hi. Right. All right, we're taking photos. Oh no, this is this this is just taking videos. It's not taking a photo. Oh. All right. What's, what's a speech? Are you gonna make a speech? Are you gonna make a speech? Yeah, something. Hi. Vlog. Why do you always choose the nice side? I chose this side. This side's the best side. Exactly. Everything. And this side I can watch Fast and Furious. It's important to but me. But any time that we go to a hotel, you always choose the better side. I don't choose the better side. I choose the side that that I like the most. Shh, you're so being so loud. It's so late. Good night. Good night, Miami. Ooh. Good night.